The note had been typed out, folded over two times, and pinned to the child's chest. It could not be missed, and as she did with all the other notes that went home with the child, her mother removed the pin and threw it away. If the contents were important, a phone call would be made to the home, and there had been no such call. The family lived in a small apartment with two rooms. On the wall of the main room was a tiny painting with a brown band at the center. That brown band was supposed to be a bridge, and the billets of red and orange brushed in around it were supposed to be trees. The child's father had painted this, but he didn't paint any more. When he came home from work, the first thing he always did was kick off his shoes. Then he'd hand over a newspaper to the child, who unfolded sheets on the floor, forming a square, and around that square they sat down to have dinner. This is actually not what I'm going to talk about today, but this arrived today in my mailbox and I'm very happy about it. This is the winner of the Scotiabank Giller Prize. I will come back to that book in a couple of minutes. How to pronounce knife. Today I'm going to talk about 10 books, about 10 awards that were given to 10 books this year. This is a video about the top 10 literary awards of 2020 and the winners chosen, not the winners chosen by me, but the collection of 10 awards chosen by me. Let's get started. Good evening. Awards are the salt in the soup sometimes. They are the chocolate on the cake, the cream on the cake or whatever you might say in your language. I have chosen 10 uh, awards, most of them uh, premier uh, books in written in English. Uh, a few of them don't, but I will tell you which ones they are. So uh, let's start with the first one, which formerly was called the Orange Prize, which is now called the Women's Prize for Fiction. Uh, this is a prize, an award that is uh, situated or at home in the United Kingdom. And this year it was postponed. The winner ceremony for the winners was postponed due to the COVID-19 crisis and the pandemic, but the winner finally was Maggie O'Farrell and her novel Hamnet. Hamnet that, as I usually say when I talk about the novel, actually should be called, should have been called Agnes, because this is a novel that Maggie O'Farrell, a very established British writer, has written about the wife of William Shakespeare and her children, and of course also her husband, who isn't named in the novel, it's about, but it's also a novel about Hamnet, because little Hamnet, the son of William Shakespeare and his wife Agnes, he dies when he's only, I think, 10 years old, and uh, he dies of a very uh, transmissible sickness, probably. And uh, this is a lot about grief, uh, about a lost son, but it's also a novel about uh, an incredible woman, Agnes, the wife of William Shakespeare. We don't know so much about her, I've learned from literary historians, but and, and Maggie O'Farrell has made up quite a bit, but she comes to a portrait uh, that is really astonishing, that is clear, that is courageous, and that is a beautiful women's portrait uh, in literature, and it's a very, um, I think it's a very well-deserved winner of the Women's Prize of 2000 and 20, although I was not so enthusiastic as many other people were about Hamlet. I liked it. And I think, which is not going to reduce the content of the book, but I think that the cover of Hamlet is one of the most beautiful covers of this year. The cover of the British edition, not of the American edition. But let's go to America, because the second prize I'm going to talk about is the National Book Award. As you know, the National Book Award has five different sections, but I'm only talking here about the National Book Award for fiction. And this prize, um, this prize, I think it was a little surprise that this prize went to Charles Yu for his novel, Interior Chinatown. Uh, also this, a novel with a very beautiful cover. Um, Charles Yu, I have made three videos about this novel together with my friend, Paula from Draw Your Book. We made three videos about this and I will link them down below uh, where we deeply discuss this novel, which is about stereotypes, Asian American stereotypes, uh, the problem that very many Asian Americans, not only Chinese Americans, really 
get mixed together. They are uh, as well racially discriminated as other non-white people in the U.S. And people don't seem to talk much about this. And it's very stere our our images of Asian Americans are very stereotypical. This book is written as a script for a movie or for a TV show. And it's a very different kind of uh, narrative than many other books that you might have picked up in 2020. Chinatown, Interior Chinatown by Charles Yu, the winner of the National Book Award. The Booker Prize, some of you regard the Booker Prize as the biggest trophy that there is on heaven or on the tree to, to, to pick down. The Booker Prize formerly was the prize of the great British Empire and its literature. Yes, it was uh, uh, because only um, countries were eligible until 2014 that had that are either Great Britain, Ireland, or former colonies like Canada, the Commonwealth uh, was also included, and the US wasn't included. The US was included since 2014. And the Booker Prize um, became internationally English, as, as, as we might say, and uh, the, the winner, the Booker Prize became, has always been a crown, and last year uh, it went to two authors, as you might know, to Girl, Woman, Other by Bernardino Varisto and to The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. This year the Booker Prize was also given to a man. We have a man as a winner of the National Book Award. We have a man as a winner of the Booker Prize. Douglas Stewart debuting with his uh, maybe partly autobiographic novel Shuggy Bane. Uh, a working class biography from Glasgow of the 1980s and onwards, and um, a very tough book, a very personal story, a very compelling story, a story that really warms your heart and breaks it and puts it together again, hopefully. And um, Shaggy Bain, uh, Douglas Stewart, the author, is both Scottish and American, which made him also appear on the long list and on the short list of the National Book Award in the United States. It was the only book that was on both the NBA shortlist and the Booker shortlist. Many of you weren't really satisfied with uh, the choice of Shaggy Bain as the winner, but as I say, uh, everybody who comes on the long list already is probably a winner who would deserve the win and the cup and the trophy and whatever, and the money, of course, that goes with the title of the award. Uh, Shaggy Bain. The fourth book I have to talk about and I want to talk about is the Scotiabank Giller Prize in Canada. It is one of the two big Canadian prizes and I chose the Scotiabank Giller. Uh, it went this year to the woman who wrote uh, the first page of the short story that I read to you in the introduction. That is Suvankam Tamavongsa and her novel is called her set of short stories, her collection of short stories that I haven't read yet because they arrived just today in my mailbox are called How to Pronounce Knife. A uh, bunch of short stories about immigration stories in Canada. Uh, I'm very uh, excited to have this book because I thought actually it would not arrive anymore. I have waited for, for almost five or six weeks, but today it arrived from Oxford. We have problems with the UK right now. You know, you have heard a new type of the virus uh, has appeared in the UK and many European countries are closing the borders towards the UK. And But this book made it through. How to Pronounce Knife um, by Suvankam Tamavangsa. The fifth award is uh, Australia is a country that we rarely hear something about here in the West because we are, Australia is in the southeast of the world and we are very much in the West. Uh, seen from Australia. And um, the Miles Franklin Award is supposed to be the greatest and the most important award in Australia. It's difficult sometimes to get Australian books. I haven't gotten this book yet. Because that's why I'm going to read what the publisher has written about the winner of the Miles Franklin Award in 2020, which goes to Tara June Winch and her novel The Yield. Knowing that he will soon die, Albert Pappy Gondelwindy has one final task he must fulfill. A member of the indigenous Rizjudi tribe, he has spent his adult life in a prosperous house and the town of Massacre Plains, a small enclave on the banks of the Mumumbi River. Before he takes his last breath, Papi is determined to pass on the language of his people, the traditions of his ancestors, and everything that was ever remembered by those who came 
before him. The land itself aids him. He finds the words on the wind. After his passing, Papi's granddaughter, August, returns home from Europe, where she has lived the past 10 years to attend his burial. Her overwhelming grief is compounded by the pain, anger and sadness of memory, of growing up in poverty before her mother's incarceration, of the racism she and her people endured, of the mysterious disappearance of her sister when they were children, an event that has haunted her and changed her life. Her homecoming is bittersweet as she confronts the love of her kin and news that Prosperous is to be repossessed by a mining company. Determined to make amends and honor Poppy and her family, she vows to save their land. A quest guided by the voice of her grandfather that leads into the past, the stories of her people, the secrets of the river. Told in three masterfully woven narratives, the yield is a celebration of language and an exploration of what makes a place home. A story of a people and a culture dispossessed, it is also a joyful reminder of what once was and what endures. A powerful reclaiming of indigenous language, storytelling and identity that, hof that offers hope for the future. The winner of the Miles Franklin Award in 2020, Tara June Winch, The Yield. We go a little bit back in time, we jump back in time, because in the beginning of this year, in the beginning of 2020, I think we already knew about the horrible thing that had changed our lives, but nevertheless, it was in the first quarter of the year, as I remembered. Um, the Pulitzer Prize uh, for fiction was announced. As you might know, the Pulitzer has never a shortlist, has never a lot, it has a shortlist, but the shortlist is first published after the winner is announced. So um, they just went out and says, the Pulitzer Prize goes to Colson Whitehead and the Nickel Boys. That's the second time that Colson Whitehead wins uh, the Pulitzer. Uh, he won it already for his uh, first novel, no, not for his first novel, but for his last novel, The, the Underground Railroad. The Nickel Boys is a story about uh, a true... Um, the Nickel Boys is a story about two uh, Afro-American boys who get incarcerated in their early teenage years in a so-called facility, a correctional facility in, think, I think in Florida, or is it in Louisiana? It's in the south uh, west of the United States, in any case. And uh, this school is called the Nickel Academy. And the Nickel Boys are these two boys and all the other boys that have been there have been incarcerated. And uh, it's a story of racism, of horrible racism, of um, violence against these children, against these boys, and about the aftermath. This is The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. It's a great novel. Uh, everybody should read it. Um, on the grounds of the Nickel Academy, and that's the real, which is a little bit in the, in the I think, in the prologue, um, they have, it was closed to, only, I think, in the 1980s, early 1980s, uh, they found uh, the bodies of lots of uh, buried children who were um, killed during their uh, stay at the Nickel Academy. And off to an award that not necessarily has to go to a, lang to a book written in English. Uh, it has to be translated into English to win the award. And this is for the uh, uh, International Dublin Literary Award. Paul it is given to a novel that has been nominated by a bunch of libraries all over the world that can nominate books for uh, the Dublin Literary Award. And it's uh, always handed out, handed over by the mayor of Dublin. And this year, for, I think for the first time in many years, uh, the win went to uh, the home team, so to speak. It went to the home country of uh, the literature. It was, went to Anna Burns and her novel Milkman. If you watch my channel, you know that I have DNF this book and I get so many reactions from you guys and uh, folks, as Joe Biden would say, I get so many reactions from you folks that I might have to pick it up again in 2021 because everybody else except me seems to have loved Milkman by Anna Burns, which I think was very difficult to read. Difficult to read. I give it a second try, I promise. Next year, Milkman. Uh, which will be in my goals of 2021 that I will publish in a couple of days. The reading goals for the next year. You will see that book again, I promise. Milkman by Anna Burns, which is, for you, those of you who might not know what it is about, it's about the troubles, uh, the um, 
civil war in Northern Ireland and um, about a very difficult time in the history of that country when uh, rumors could very quickly lead to horrible violence. The winner of the International Dublin Literary Award, Anna, Mil Anna Milk with Burnsman. No, Anna Burns with Milkman. Let's stay in Ireland for book number eight, which I haven't read. Um, it's the winner of the Irish Book Awards, which is the Irish championship, so to speak, for uh, fiction. And I'm going to butcher the name of the author and I give my honest excuses to her. Um, her name is Darian Ni Griofa and the novel is called A Ghost in the Throat. And this is from the publisher. A true original, in this stunningly unusual prose debut, Dariani Griofa, excuse me, sculpts essay and autofiction to explore inner life and the deep connection felt between two writers centuries apart. In the 1700s, an Irish noblewoman, on discovering her husband has been murdered, drinks hands full of his blood and composes an extraordinary poem. Excuse my Gaelic. Ablin Dupni Conal a Caniat Art u Lauguer, famously referred to by Peter Levy, professor of poetry at Oxford University, as the greatest poem written in either Ireland or Britain during the 18th century. In the present day, a young mother narrowly avoids tragedy. On encountering the poem, she becomes obsessed with its parallels with her own life and sets out to track down the rest of the story. A Ghost in the Throat is a devastating and timeless tale about one woman feeling her voice by reaching into the past and finding another's that is the winner of the Irish Book Award. Daria Negrofa, A Ghost in the Throat. The last two titles, number nine and number 10 of my top 10 literary award of 2020 are thrillers. For those of you who like to have some exciting, who like to have some exciting moments in front of the Christmas tree. The Edgars, the Edgar Award, which is uh, the greatest award in uh, crime fiction for the United States, uh, went to Ellie Griffiths and her novel, The Stranger Diaries. Claire Cassidy is no stranger to murder. A high school teacher is specializing in the Gothic writer R.M. Holland. She even teaches a course on him. But when one of Claire's colleagues is found dead, with a line from Holland's iconic story, The Stranger, left by her body, Claire is horrified to see her life collide with her favorite literature. The police suspect the killer is someone Claire knows. Unsure whom to trust, she turns to her diary, the only outlet for her suspicion and fears. Then one day she notices something odd, writing that isn't hers, left on the page of an old diary. Hello, Claire, you don't know me. Claire becomes more certain than ever. The stranger has come to terrifying life. But can the ending be rewritten in time? This is the Edgar, a winner of 2020, Ellie Griffiths, The Stranger Diaries. And the final book, the 10th award, is the British Gold Dagger Award. And this went to an Australian author, Michael Robertham, for his novel, Good Girl, Bad Girl. Six years ago, Evie Cormack was discovered, filthy and half-starved, hiding in a secret room in the aftermath of a shocking crime. Now approaching adulthood, Evie is damaged, self-destructive, and has never revealed her true identity. Forensic psychologist Cyrus Haven, a man haunted by his own past, is investigating the death of champion figure skater Jody Sheehan. When Cyrus is called upon to assess Evie, she threatens to disrupt the case and destroy his ordered life. Because Evie has a unique and dangerous gift. She knows when someone is lying and nobody is telling the truth. And these were my top 10 literary awards of the year of 2020. Please let me know if you have read uh, one, two, three, or even more of these winners of this year. And if you think that they deserve their wins, or if you would have uh, chosen a different novel, a different piece of literature to win this, these great awards. Thanks very much for watching this video. I come back soon because I have all the time in the world right now on my winter holiday. Stay safe, socially distance from each other, vaccines are on the way. Today the European Union has uh, has accepted the Pfizer vaccine which will come to be um, jabbed, no jabbed, come to be um, 
Europeans will get vaccinated in the European Union from the 27th. Have a beautiful evening and uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.